All right, uh, Josh Boskin. Um, I moved to Cleveland in the summer of 2007. Um, probably in about the month of April, I was at dinner with my high school coach, and we got a phone call from Heath Esslinger, and basically said, I need somebody up here to do all the stuff I don't want to do. Mop the mats, do the laundry, whatever. Do you want to come and be that guy? And um, long story short, within, I think, probably a week, I, the little things that I had, it was in my car, and I moved up to Cleveland, so. So, um, for the first six months, I probably lived in the Jones Center. I didn't have a house or anything. I lived here, we had cable, we had laundry, all, all I needed. This is the, the mecca of wrestling, and in my mind, I was like, I hit the jackpot. Like, I felt, I felt, I didn't really realize how special it was at the moment. I just knew that I got to coach wrestling at one of the coolest places, um, and I was fired up about it. My name's Joey Knox. I'm the head wrestling coach at Cleveland High School. I've uh, been at Cleveland High School for this next nine years. Leanne Charette, and this is my second year helping with Lady Raider Wrestling. I'm Matt High. I've been helping with Cleveland Wrestling now for maybe, let's see, six years. My name is Jenna Morris. This is my first year helping with Cleveland Wrestling. Uh, we just moved here from Tullahoma. It is my eighth year coaching wrestling. My name is Coach John Weiss, um, assistant coach at the middle school and assistant coach at the high school. This is my sixth year here in Cleveland and 20th year overall coaching. My name is Evan Vermillion. I'm the head wrestling coach at Cleveland Middle School and I've been here helping with the wrestling program for the past nine years. Started, I was actually out of coaching um, for a couple of years. I'd been at UTC. Uh, I was actually working at a church there locally and wanted to start a wrestling club that was about more than just wrestling and really hoped that a lot of kids from different places would come in uh, very quickly. The Cleveland job opened up and I ended up uh, applying for that job then getting that job and then higher calling just kind of morphed into this feeder system uh, for Cleveland High School and so it didn't really start with that intention uh, but it ended up that way and that, that's the nature of the beast the, the school that you're at is you know that youth program is going to feed that school and so winning is also it's about numbers and we knew that if we could grow our numbers, when I first got to Cleveland, I think that first year, we only had like three or four ninth graders that had ever wrestled before uh, on our team. And so we knew that those numbers had to grow. And that was not just at higher calling in the youth level, but it was at the middle school level. I think in our first three years at, at Cleveland, you know, at the middle school level, the year before we got there, it was very few kids. Like, I mean, maybe 15 kids on the team. And then it went to like, 65, 70, 75 kids being on the middle school team. And so if you have a lot of numbers out, there's gonna be some really good kids in there that fall in love with the sport or dedicated to what it takes to be excellent. And then the coaching part of it gets way easier. We, we moved around a lot when I was a kid. 
uh, and I, I was playing soccer and basketball. I was playing, now I wasn't playing like rec basketball. I was just playing backyard basketball with my buddies. And the youth pastor drove by one day, saw me playing basketball, and he's like, hey, you ought to think about uh, this sport called wrestling. I started I started going to these practices, and you know, I, I like the idea of competing against somebody my own size, and uh, I, it was something that I, I took to pretty, like, pretty quick. I was talented right, right away. I ended up wrestling in college, uh, did pretty good. Uh, won Southern Conference one time, didn't get to finish my senior year, tore my shoulder up, but uh, then, you know, I got, got out of wrestling and out of college and uh, was trying to figure out what I was gonna do with this business degree that I'd gotten because I didn't know really know what I wanted to do. I was gonna wrestle in the Olympics, you know. Uh, I gotta find something to do, so I volunteered, I like, started volunteering at the, uh, Chattanooga Central uh, down there and volunteer coaching. Uh, we ended up winning like two state titles, a small school state titles down there. And I was like, I was kind of hooked. We got a phone call. Uh, I said, you know, uh, but I got to a point where I was like, I, you know, I can't, I can't work all day and then ask to take off at two o'clock in the afternoon to go coach wrestling like you can't you can't work a real job and coach at the same time so i was like all right i'm gonna go back to school and get a uh, a teaching license so that i can become a coach eric phillips helped me out like a lot with that and uh jake yo so they, they talked me into coming up to cleveland and been here ever since so i grew up my dad was in the Marine Corps, so every two years we, we were moving. Um, I never really had a home. Um, lived in Okinawa, Japan for three years. After Okinawa, we moved to Johnson City. Um, Johnson City, we were there for a year, then I, we moved to Quantico, Virginia. My dad got stationed in Quantico for a year, and then some stuff was going on, so I moved back to Johnson City my freshman year, and that's when I started high school at Science Hill. Um, wasn't really good. Um, never placed in the state tournament to my senior year, but I just loved it. I don't know why. Nobody in my family wrestled. Just something about it just got me hooked. And um, at Science Hill, we had a few state champs, but it was nothing like we have now. Um, so my dream was just to be a state champion. State tournament my senior year, and this was kind of like the first time my name got, got out there, I guess. Um, uh, I ended up, I think, majoring in uh, Jake um, beat him pretty good and then everybody's kind of like okay who's this kid from Science Hill um, made the state finals had a kid from Cookville and I, and I really do feel like that match or me winning a state title that year like got me where I am today um, never had it easy as far as wrestling wise but I just loved it and uh, it gave me an opportunity to wrestle at UTC for um, Terry Brands and Coach Esslinger um, and that's kind of where I'm at today. Um, Heath, I guess Heath, Heath put up with all my bull crap, but he also saw the passion and love I had for the sport. After Chattanooga didn't work out for me, I moved back home, was trying to figure stuff out, and that's when I got the phone call from him, and he kind of kicked me in my butt and got me back on the right track, and thankful, very thankful for Heath. I think there's been a lot of people pouring into him. His high school coach was incredible, Jeff Price. Um, there's a, you know, it's not one meal that sustains us and keeps us alive. It's, it's little meals over time. We don't remember a lot of them, but they do keep us alive. And um, I think there, he's been fortunate to have some incredible people in his life. I'm, I was just a little small stop. Uh, now it ended up changing his direction uh, quite a bit from where he was and what he was doing. Um, but listen, man, he's far exceeded anything I could have ever done there. And to me, that's the joy of it. Like if you break a record, you want to bring someone in to break that, you know, raise the bar and break the records. Too, too many people are afraid of 
uh, of tryhards. And I've always prided myself on being a tryhard and surrounding myself with tryhards. I think it's the greatest compliment you can get as a human. Um, because if, if I surround myself with tryhards, that means every time they raise the bar, I get an opportunity to be forced to jump higher. And I think that's what we've done at, at Cleveland. And I think that's what Bradley County has represented in the sport of wrestling is that there's been a lot of people in there working uh, and they work really hard and wrestling's important. And because of that, it continues to grow. When Coach Boskin first came in, I really didn't have a coaching vision for him. I knew he loved wrestling and he was so gifted at teaching and um, you know, getting kids excited, but I really wanted to help him, you know, in every other area of his life. Uh, we all go through these phases and I brought him here and, you know, that first year, uh, he was an assistant at the high school. He helped run club and, um, you know, our program started taking steps forward and I knew that he was special when it came to coaching. Just his love for the sport was incredible uh, and his ability to teach it was unreal. And so, um, you know, once I began to see him operate, I knew that he was going to be an important part of Cleveland wrestling moving forward. And looking back over the last 10 to 12 years, he is the he is the hub and the center of that wheel that keeps things going. And so um, I'm sure glad I made that call to Jeff Price at Science Hill and said, hey, send him down here to me. You know, my, my philosophy has always been just surround yourself with great people. And then no matter what happens, you know, it's in good hands. Um, I tried to take some of those people with me when I took the Chattanooga job because they were that good. Uh, but fortunately, the, the, some of them stayed and the, the listen, it, I was the one, Al Miller started all this and Dwayne Triver and a bunch of other people. And so, like, I don't deserve any credit for this. Uh, we surrounded ourselves with really good people. Uh, we started getting kids excited about wrestling. Uh, wrestling began to become more mainstream at the school and in that community. It was already kind of mainstream. Uh, at Bradley Central High School, we had to make it more mainstream there where it was cool to be a wrestler. We wanted kids running around at football games with wrestling shirts on, not just with Little League Baseball or, you know, football shirts on. And so um, I, I knew, I, heck, I thought I'd be at Cleveland forever, but, um, you know, that, that wasn't the way it worked out. But I, there were great people there and uh, they took over and they took it to a new level. And that's what you want. Anytime you leave a place, you want to leave it in a position where the next person can take it uh, to new levels. That's how records are broken. Forever, no one could run a four minute mile. Then someone did it. And then someone else did it. And then someone else did it. But there was the first guy to do it. And so um, we wanted to elevate the program and the next guy was going to come in and do a great job. And you can see every person that stepped in after has taken it to a new level. You know, everybody thinks, oh, you live in Cleveland, you, know, there, you have this culture of wrestling. We don't. That culture has got to be recreated every year with a five-year-old. Because you know, when they when they turn on the TV, they don't see wrestling. When they turn on the TV, they see football, and they see basketball, and they see baseball. Like, we have to get into the schools. We have to get to the ball fields. And we have to, like, get around them where they might not know what wrestling is and say, hey, this is a really cool sport, and we're pretty good at it in Cleveland. You should give it a try. And, uh, you know, we... We, we believe if we can get him in the door, we, we can get, get you know, we, the right kid, we're going to get hooked. Um, so looking back at it now, like, the program's not going to keep winning just because we're Cleveland. It, it, the second we stop focusing on the development at the youth level, we're, we're not going to win. That's why, like, we stress out. Like, as much as Knox stresses out about the high school, like, as a team, we stress that about, like, all right, we look at every year, like, all right, our beginner's program, we only had 70 kids. Well, how many fifth graders did we have? How many fourth? We have to look at the numbers because we, we have to push, you know, so many fifth graders to Coach V, you know, so he can push eighth graders to Coach Knox. Like, it's, it's just, it's ongoing. So The fact that we offer a program from kindergarten all the way through high school for kids to continue to get better, where I grew up, that offered that. So when I got down here, it was a special thing for me to see that they start so young and grow a love for the sport and a love for this program. No, I, I definitely think that the middle school years are some of the most formative for wrestlers for sure because uh, it's a time when uh, kids start to transition from simply looking at wrestling as something we like to do, is really fun. I mean, we want to preserve that obviously, uh, but to be competitive at the highest levels starting in high school uh, and then if you have the opportunity at the college level as well, uh, the middle school years are kind of where you transition kids from 
Um, wrestling is uh, more of a lifestyle than it is just something we do from, you know, maybe October through February or whatever. I mean, if, if we don't do it, they're not going to know about it unless they're, unless, you know, because we don't have like, see Bradley, they have all these kit, all the, you know, the great wrestlers from Bradley are older now. They have kids who are like, they're pushing them into it. Well, we don't, we don't have that. Like we don't have, you know, you know. Bailey Jones and, and Marvin, like those guys that have wrestled for us aren't, they don't have kids and they're not wrestling yet. Like, so like we have to go out there and be like, this is what wrestling is and just give it a shot. You know, you know, in the past we've done, we've done elementary wrestling tours where we throw mats in the trailer and we drive to every elementary school. We roll them out, we get the kids in the mat. And so they can actually see what it looks like. You know, a lot of them think, you know, they're jumping off the top rope, you know, it's a joke, but a lot of them do think that. Um, so once they get in there, we, they, we you know, whatever we got to do to get one more kid in the room, that's what we'll, we'll do it. Being able to, to help kids develop both technically, uh, but probably more importantly, like the mental side of, of the sport, that kind of really starts in middle school. And that's where I think that it's important to start challenging kids. We've got 65 kids on our middle school team this year. So it kind of starts even from our new, from our kids that are very, very new to our kids that are really advanced, they get to see what it's like to be part of a very successful program and then they carry that success onto the high school. I mean, it takes a lot of people involved too. Like, in the beginning, I was doing it by myself and it was hard, like, traveling every weekend. I mean, for the last six years, Knox is like, everywhere I've been, he's like, save me a seat. Like, I'm going. Like, and it, it not without question, not, I mean, he knows that you know, little Trey Bell is gonna be a freshman one day for him, and he wants to know Trey Bell, and he wants to know Trey Bell's parents. When he gets to, as a freshman, it's like, now we're just fine tuning stuff so these kids can like, you know, perform at a high level. So, it, it takes a lot of people, but it just, it, it's a full-time commitment, and it's for nothing else but that we love the sport and we love teaching it. Uh, the thing the special about Cleveland that I think makes it different than the other places I've been either wrestled at or coached at is just the uh, community's love for the sport. It's not really a, a sport in the South where you get uh, too much attention. I mean, uh, football and basketball and baseball, those tend to be the kind of uh, the sports that people like to focus on. But in Cleveland, uh, it's all about wrestling. And I, I think that's really what makes it different from other places is that the community actually loves the sport. Uh, and so wrestling is to me the most grueling but also the most rewarding. I mean, you learn so much about yourself and so much about an individual, about who you are as an individual, but also who you are as a teammate. I mean, if you lose a match, it not only affects you, but it affects the rest of the team and the team score. But you kind of get to see what it's like to truly fight for yourself as well and really push yourself past what you think you're capable of. Okay, we gotta learn if we can get to our if we can get to that cross face, arm off the mat, and this guy's leg up, get in there. Circle, circle. If we can get there, we can pin everybody. That's what you gotta realize. I think what is special about this place um, is that it starts at a young age and it doesn't matter how good of a wrestler you are, if you're the best one in the room or the worst one in the room, um, every coach here coaches like every kid, like they're the best in the country. So it's every kid literally matters in the room. And I think that's what makes it a special place. Man, wrestling in Cleveland is, is a lifestyle. Uh, wrestling in Cleveland, uh, you're gonna hear it a lot. Just, it, it's a mindset, it's, it's a love, it's a passion. Uh, it's community. Um, these kids from five years old up to 18 years old, are bought in from top to bottom. So what's special about it than other places is just the commitment level from uh, the kids first and foremost, then the coaches and then the parents. Cleveland wrestling's special. All, um, all the moving parts that it takes to work as a whole, as a unit, um, even as being an outsider for previous years, you could see and everybody, everybody sees the work that goes in with Cleveland wrestling and they try to model that process 
Um, as a former head coach, that's what we tried to model with our program, and so it's really exciting to be a part of the program now and to start to become part of that family. I think Coach Knox and Boskin have a very special eye when it comes to uh, wrestlers and just people in general. Uh, you know, they might not see you as like a great wrestler, but they, they see you as one of those harder, hardest workers in the room, and uh, because of that effort that you're putting into it, uh, there's gonna be benefits and you're gonna reap rewards just because you're putting in that effort, uh, you know, and you're being part of something that's greater than you, you know? Uh, and that takes a lot to, to uh, put yourself in a position where you know that you're gonna be in that shadow and uh, you're gonna have to sit back there for a little bit. And, uh, but that's, uh, you know, like a fungus, you know, you grow in the shadow, you know, you get stronger. Uh, and uh, that's definitely, I kind of see what happened to myself. Like I, I, I was kind of like sat on the back burner, you know, uh, but I was definitely still like, I never stopped pursuing it or never stopped working as hard because I was on it. If anything, it uh, uh, propelled me to push harder, you know, and uh, I think that's what it's like, makes a difference. Right out the gate, I mean, my wife is like, anybody that knows her, like she's she's the best i mean like not many wives will let their husband i mean last summer or two two years ago i was gone i was gone 47 weeks out of the year just traveling to camps or running camps or going to tournaments and not once has she ever said can you just stay home this weekend like she just knows like she's she's been there since day one so she's been there when these kids are staying at our house because it, you know they need a place to stay and you know they she sees the impact that you know that we have on the kids outside of wrestling and she knows that as much as I love wrestling that I really do love like just being there for the kids um so the the, the that that alone just her allowing me to do what I love everything else is on me like as long as I'm passionate and love what I'm doing I'm gonna keep doing it as long as she's cool with it and She's got my back 100%, so. Uh, you've never seen a bunch of coaches or kids so passionate and committed uh, to Cleveland. Um, and I'll tell you what, and they're loyal. They stay loyal to the program. Uh, they're loyal kindergarten to middle school, middle school to high school. Uh, and now with the girls wrestling programs, I'll tell you what, there's, there's no other group of girls that have each other's back like those girls do. Uh, so. I know that just the commitment that these young men and young ladies have for each other, the loyalty that they have to the program and to Cleveland, and the passion that they have every time they walk into the room, and the room is always open here. I didn't really know what to expect when I first started working with girls. Uh, I had seen uh, Piper wrestling because my oldest son was wrestling in the same room with her and um, I knew how tough she was and how physical and how strong she was. But I was kind of curious how that would go with all the other girls when we first started last year. But um, it's been really fun for me to see the growth in the girls, um, not just physically in their skills wrestling, but also with their confidence. Um, I feel like their confidence has just grown tremendously and just to, See them transform over the last year has been a lot of fun. I love, I love when we. There's not a specific time, but I love when we, when we have a group of kids and and they start to figure it out. You know, especially I'm I'm learning that more with the girls now than ever. Like, with the exception of Piper and Senna, like everybody's new. So like every match we we went, like they they figured something out, and you know, you know we don't. We're not teaching a whole lot of wrestling, and with the girls, we're teaching them how to like how to win, what what, a, what wrestling matches look like. So every match is new, but for me, that, especially this year for the girls, man, like every time they stepped on the mat, they surprised me. Like they, I mean, every match, <laughs> like they they showed they showed more heart and guts than any boy or any kid you know just they want to win just as bad as everybody else and them falling in love with the sport as the season went along like that was the coolest thing for me a bunch of girls that didn't know what wrestling was but now they like they they put the whole state on notice just because they're like freaking we can win too um 
and they bought into the expectations that Cleveland wrestling has. It's not just for boys anymore. It's like, we want to win. But they just, they wrestled with a chip on their shoulder. Um, some of that was put in their head by me, just saying, hey, you guys are the new, new girls in the block. Everybody says you're not good enough. Like, we got to show up every time and prove them wrong. Um, but they just, they, they, they want to win. They want, they're competitors and they, they bought into the, the, the vision that Cleveland Wrestling has for a program. That's to win state championships right out the gate. Watching them fall in love with the sport as the season went along, that was, that was the coolest thing with, for me. But it was not one, like Matt, at one moment. It was every time they wrestled. I was like, golly, they're tough. They're tough. I think we had uh, eight, eight or eight or nine sophomores in the starting lineup. Um, knew potentially that you know if anything could go wrong, that this would be the year that it would go wrong. You know, almost like Murphy's Murphy's Law: <laughs> it can't go wrong, it would go wrong. You know. Uh, <clears throat> then we uh, that and a little worried at the beginning of the year about injuries, uh, depth-wise. Do we have guys that you know? Yeah, it's a contact sport. So you're always going to be aware of that kind of stuff. And I mean, we ended up losing a starting senior uh, to an injury late in the season. And, and you know, luckily we we had we had a freshman that was tough, you know, and and and, and a, a high character kid that knew we needed him. Uh, so he he stepped up and, and battled battled for us and did what we needed him to do. But uh, yeah, that was that was kind of it was a little more stressful this year <laughs> than it has been in the past. You know, when, you, when you're dealing with kids that that age, uh, the maturity level, the decisions, and not like they just they just don't know, you know, kind of stuff. started off hot and the crowds into it and we start off hot and our crowds into it and like I kind of get lost into both dual meets that it, like Jenna's having a nice line like they're looking at you and they, you know like but our girls are wrestling well but we, they, we give them a game plan and it's it's and it couldn't have it couldn't have it was, it was just felt like it was meant to be like once we got to the semis which we had a scare but once we got there and, the, and we started rolling and the boys started rolling. It just felt like there was like a quietness, and like it was like this is gonna happen.
always talking about this is the year that like people can beat us. Like we got we got to step up and be tough. We can't lay down. Like they're not gonna lay down for us. Like they're, if if they're gonna try, it's gonna be this year. Like if anybody's gonna like put up a battle and come to war with us, this is gonna be the year. And we gotta be tough and solid. We got to the, the final match for us. Not We got to the, the match where we sealed it, and I didn't even know we won. And Jenna's like, we just won, we just won. And I'm like, and I'm, like I'm like going over the head table. I'm like, how many matches are left? What's, what are we up by? And I'm like, I can't even do math in my head. And it was like single-digit math. And I'm like, so let me get a calculator. Like, make sure we're, because if we forfeit, the, cause we're, I was going to forfeit out. You know, I was like, we won. And we're, that's, you know, I don't want to risk any injuries for end. And I'm look, I looked at the, we had two girls left. Uh, Bella and Jay Lee and I'm like do you want to wrestle and they're like that's why we came and like I was like I was getting teary I was like freaking go and I looked up to Jay Lee and her dad's right there they were they were like we came to wrestle like we're not forfeiting to anybody like we came to wrestle and at that time like I'm getting like freaking emotional now same time you know my son's wrestling and he's he's you know he's grew up in the program like it's it's cool for me to see him give back to the program and it's cool for the girls to to just do something that nobody thought they could do um but they told you man they they freaking blew my mind every every time they stepped out there they they put they 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 put me on their back and they're like we're gonna we're gonna get this we're gonna get this um so now we just gotta win another one I mean, watching Cy Fowler pin, you know, off of something that we'd, we'd, we'd come in and work morning practices with him on it, like multiple, multiple times. And it wasn't like, hey, we're gonna like work, like it was a little nugget, nugget. like we just were working it. And then he, uh, he, he got it in the same position, got it in the region duels and the, uh, the official blew it dead and said, you know, this is, you can't do that, you can't. And we went back and tweaked it and, uh, and, and then to see him get right back to the same position, trust the coaching, trust the process, and buy in and it pay off and work. And in my opinion, you know, there were still 12 other wrestlers that had to wrestle after him, but that won the duel. Uh, I, and I think it, it kind of, deflated them and lifted our guys up and we're like like we got this all we gotta do is go take care of business now so that that to me was like the most exciting part because it was it was immediate like relief for me <laughs> you know it's stressed out and then like, oh we pinned here <laughs> last time we lost like we got a good cushion <laughs> you know so we got girls on the team that love the sport now like before they were just kind of like oh something else we can do no, oh, I'm already in. I'm, I'm sucked in now. I just got to keep going. And I just had to, you know, keep them in it, keep them in it. Now they love wrestling. We had, we had 12 girls show up today for practice. Like, they, they love wrestling now. Um, so now it's, now the, my job gets a little, not more enjoyable, but now I get to, like, teach wrestling. Like, real wrestling. Um, so, I just, next is just to, 
do what's always next. You know, assess what's what needs to be fixed and try to fix it and give everything I got to them and give them every opportunity that, you know, so they can do something that's never been done in Tennessee and win back to back for girls. So. Just outside the Cherokee National Forest, there's a town called Cleveland, Tennessee. In some ways, it's a lot like a lot of other towns. In other ways, it's a bit of a cultural anomaly. Life here is a little slower, a little gentler. Good manners still matter. People here know each other. Their roots run deep, sometimes going back several generations. They work together, go to church together. They raise their families together, here. Cleveland's one of those places people visit and don't want to leave. It's beautiful. It's soccer on warm fall Sundays. It's Friday night lights. It's the boys of summer playing baseball. But there's something else about this town that most people, even sports fans, would never suspect. Another anomaly, you might say. Folks that know anything about the sport of wrestling know that the Southeast is not exactly the center of the wrestling universe. Matter of fact, only one university in the whole Southeastern Conference even has a wrestling program. The Northeast, the Midwest. Now that's where the roots of wrestling history run deep. Not the Southeast, but here, in this little anomaly of Cleveland, Tennessee, exists one of the best wrestling clubs in the whole nation. 